Four weeks ago, our farm was invaded by army worms. And these little caterpillars can eat acres and acres of grass in just a few days. <laughs> Surprisingly, they delivered one benefit to our pastured pig paddocks that I never would have imagined. I saw the first sign of the army worms when I was moving a group of pigs into a new pastured paddock right here behind the camera. I had stopped to look at how well the new cover crops were growing. I looked down and I saw dozens and dozens of these little army worms, these caterpillars. My gosh, look at that. That is most unfortunate. They are all over the place here. You can see the manure from all the army worms all over the ground, just in one square foot. Then I saw them marching all the way across the gravel road that we use to access the property. I wasn't sure what to do about it. Now we had a couple of Muscovy ducks from a neighbor's that were coming over to eat the army worms, but we could have had 200 ducks and several hundred chickens and they still wouldn't have made a dent to the thousands and thousands of army worms there are a lot of insecticides and pesticides that'll deal with army worms, but many of them are systemic. And in fact, if they kill the army worms and a bird comes and eats the army worms, I was a little concerned that they'd hurt the birds as well, or the pigs. Now there are, there are some controls like a particular bacteria, BT, that'll kill caterpillars, but it won't harm anything else. All it is is just a bacteria that disrupts the digestive process of the caterpillars but those often take several days to work. And as regenerative farmers, we're trying to get away from the herbicides and the pesticides and the synthetic fertilizers, even if they don't hurt anything other than the army worms. So what were we to do about it? Most importantly, we've developed a large population of dung beetles and other insects that help digest the pig manure so it goes back into the soil even more quickly and more efficiently. And I didn't want to do anything to harm those. After all, the pig manure is gold and we want to harvest as much of it as we can, but also keep our pasture sanitary and the dung beetles help with both of those processes. By the time I got the pesticides, the sprayer, and had the time to do it, a lot of the damage would have been done. And after talking to a neighboring soybean farmer, he told me about some of the sprays that we could use, but he did tell me that sometimes after a light rain or a few days of light rain, the army worms tend to go away or die or something happens to them. A brief understanding of the life cycle of army worms, I think will help put this issue into a little bit of perspective. Army worms are really just a caterpillar of some types of moths. The moths will come and lay eggs on the leaves of the plant. In two to five days, the eggs will hatch and you'll get the larval stage, which are the little caterpillar. And they don't eat the entire leaf, just the underside of the leaf at first. But the caterpillar or larval stage of these army worms can last anywhere from 10 to 22 days, depending on the weather. And 80% of the damage that the army worms do is done in the last two to three days of their life cycle. By the time we actually see the damage, it's already done and over with, unless we can spray immediately and whatever we spray kills them immediately. But most of the insecticides that kill them immediately harm other insects as well. And I don't want to harm our pigs or any of the other life forms on the farm. After the caterpillar stage, they pupate for a few days and then become moths. The entire life cycle of these moths, the entire life cycle of army worms from egg to adult moth can be just a few weeks. Unless you're paying very careful attention to your pastures, your hay fields, or your crops, a lot of times the damage from the army worms will have mostly be complete by the time you notice such a drastic change in the forage. And the army worms did a lot, I mean a lot of damage to the pastures. Because we'd just come out of a drought, we were having a lot of fresh tender grass, and those army worms came and ate all that fresh tender grass. But as I said, the army worms did a lot of damage, but they offered a lot of benefit but to grasp how beneficial they were, I need to explain a little bit about this cover crop field that I saw them in. 
In one particular field, I planted the cover crops. As soon as we got the soil moisture, I planted them no-till and I drilled them directly into the pasture paddock. And then I mowed the grass that was growing on that field beforehand. But because the grass was already rooted and growing, the grass regrew faster than the cover crops germinated. The result was that the grass was out competing the cover crops because I couldn't mow the cover crops quite low enough with the bush hog. Well, this is most unfortunate. I thought I was recording while I fed the pigs and that red deer rock right there got pushed underneath the fence. I got it right back in easily, but I didn't get it on video. So now I got to remember where I was. I thought it worked really well because I had done it before this summer. I bush hogged the paddock real low and then I drilled sorghum sedan grass into it. The sorghum sedan grass sprouted, uh, grew until we got some rain and then jumped off and performed really well. What I did not calculate though was that I wasn't able to mow this paddock quite as low because pigs will mess up a pasture and root it up a little bit. And secondly, uh, we had a little bit of an issue with a bush hog that's now fixed, but I couldn't mow it quite as low as I wanted to. The cover crop mix that I planted was crimson clover, daikon radish, buckwheat, so forage soybeans, and maybe a couple other things. The thing that I wasn't calculating on though is that group doesn't do quite as well with competition as sorghum sedan grass does. So the combination of not mowing the grass that was already there low enough, and then planting less aggressive competitors in that forage crop meant that the grass grew better when it, as it was raining. And that's where the army worms came in and saved the day. Let's go over there and let me show you what I'm talking about. And there are two things that really help that cover crop. And you can tell that the buckwheat is growing and blooming, doing quite well. The daikon radishes are performing well. The chicory is doing well. And you'll notice that there's not much grass growing in the paddock at all. And what grass is growing in the paddock is mostly smaller, younger grass that has been growing since the army worms ate all the grass. Don't get me wrong, everything's not roses and sunshine. After all, you can still see some weedy brush in there like that, but the grass has not completely overwhelmed the brassicas and the buckwheat, which is what I was afraid was gonna happen. Now you might recall that a neighboring row crop farmer had told me that sometimes a light rain will help dissuade the army worms. They'll either kill them or drive them away or something, but it'll reduce that army worm pressure. We were expected to get some within the next couple of days and we never did. But I created my own slight rainfall and irrigated this field along with the field next door. The cover crop field is performing a lot better now. Now whether the value came from the army worms eating the grass and reducing the immediate competition for these cover crops, or whether the irrigation helped deal with the army worms, or maybe a combination of both, I can't tell you. But I can tell you that the army worms did deal with the grass. Cat and grass for cows is excellent. But the daikon radish, the buckwheat, the forage soybeans, the chicory, they're all much, much better for pigs. So there was some surprising benefit of having the army worms on our pig paddocks. Even though it destroyed some of the grasses for the cows, it seems to have benefited our pig paddocks. And of course, the ducks loved it.